Welcome YouTube yogis. I'm here with Sam Bones today and we're doing a video for you about how to wake up the twins and uh, turn on the twins. I'm calling this one. The twins in my lingo are the transversus abdominis muscle, which is a corset of muscle that wraps around your belly and the pelvic floor. You'll see I do a lot of classes on this because it's really, really important. They're what we call two of the four deep core muscles that stabilize you without having to think about it. So they anticipate your movement. The more that they work properly for you, the more that the secondary muscles that can be buggers get to relax and take a holiday. So for many of us, they lose their intuitiveness over time, whether it be uh, repetitive motion, childbirth, uh, trauma, there's all kinds of reasons. But the good news is we can find them, locate them, and turn them back on. So I'm going to do some uh, placements for you that will help you to understand the relationship between respiration, your transversus abdominis, and from now on I'm just going to call them your TAs, and your pelvic floor, your PF. So this for all means today is your diaphragm. It is a dome shaped muscle and it fits in nicely right underneath the rib cage. Again, not a biomedical model. Uh, as I bring in these balls, imagine that these balls are your organs and they're all in there resting peacefully, relaxed underneath the diaphragm. So we have the the above the diaphragm is the thoracic cavity, your chest cavity, and below it is your abdominal cavity. So it is the dividing line, first of all. But then I'm going to bring in this little guy here, and I'm going to put it down here and imagine that that's your pelvic floor muscles, which actually are a diamond shape. We're going to find that today. But I'm going to put that down there. So the pelvic floor muscles in the diamond shape are right, uh, right down at the bottom. So if you imagine you're like a a soda can. And if you take the soda can and, and you just open the top, you're good. That would be your mouth and up here, your airway. But if you open the bottom of the soda can, everything's really going to leak out. That's kind of like your pelvic floor. It holds everything up. It's going to hold these abdominal organs in here. One more piece of, um, piece of material coming in here. So imagine this is your transversus abdominis. It is that corset of muscles that wraps all the way around the front here. So it's very responsible for that inner abdominal pressure. It also holds your, so it holds your viscera, your organs in place. We want the transversus abdominis and the pelvic floor to function together. That's why I call them the twins. The way we get them to, to start firing together is with our respiration. So I'm going to remove the transversus abdominis, but imagine it wrapped around here and it's your deepest layer of muscle, not that rectus, what we call the six pack abs, but way in there. That's, that's superior to it. So now imagine this is your diaphragm. When you take a breath in the diaphragm actually contracts and presses downward. And more importantly, it flattens. So if you take a breath in right now, place your hands on your belly, notice how your belly expands. Well, our lungs aren't down in our belly as we know. So the expansion you feel in your belly is the pressure of your diaphragm coming down on your organs. It flattens out and that makes your abdomen rise. So if you come back to, we have this beautiful TVA here, this transverse abdominis, it's very difficult to contract a muscle inward to make it smaller. So that's the TVA. If we've got this pressure coming down on the inhalation. So in other words, this diaphragm is contracting. And as the diaphragm is contracting, the TVAs are expanding. That's, that's the recipe there. And we, we play with nature all the time and it loses that, but that's what we want. So the second part, the twins down here, I'm going to set the TVAs beside the, the pelvic floor is the same. So the pelvic floor and the TVAs work together in conjunction. So once again, you take a breath in and inspiration, notice your belly rises that is pressing down. So that pressure on your organs, it's going to expand your TVAs. It's also going to press down into your pelvic floor. So your pelvic floor muscles will stretch and expand. Once again, inhalation is not the time to learn to contract your pelvic floor muscles. 
There is a beautiful rhythm, however, on the exhalation. So take an exhalation, and as you exhale, the diaphragm crawls back up under the rib cage, relaxes, and here's the thing. The diaphragm relaxes, it tells the TVAs, here we go, and the pelvic floor to contract. So as we feel the abdomen empty, it's like emptying a balloon, the TVAs can then actively contract inward and the pelvic floor actively contracts upward. That's the rhythm. That's our biological rhythm, which unfortunately we often lose. But today, you're going to remember how to find it. All right. Make no bones about it. We shipped him out, and we're going to get into finding the TAs in the pelvic floor. So I'm going to ask you to sit on two blocks or books, and you can come up to wherever you're comfortable so that you can bend your knees, take your feet slightly outward, and knees outward. And you're also going to need a strap or something to lay underneath your back. It could be a towel for that matter. So coming into this position, I want you to just gently rock side to side. So we're, we're landing and locating first in what we call our sits bones, our pubic bones, our ischial tuberosities. And I call this the north and the south of your pelvic floor diamond. And you can feel that, feel those bony landmarks as you just rock back and forth. You want to make sure that surface is hard enough that you're feeling it. And just feel those bony landmarks. So locate yourself through the pelvic floor. We're creating the diamond. We've got two sides of the diamond. And then pause for a moment. And we'll find the east and west. So the, the, what we'd say in medical terms, the anterior and posterior, I like to call it the pee pee and the poo poo use whatever works for you. But if you start to rock back and forth, feel how you're taking the, the sits bones. They're like rocking horses and we can rock back and forth very smoothly and feel the backside of them. So as you come to the back of the sits bones, you might even feel your tailbone and your pelvis is tilting backwards and you're rocking forward and you're coming towards the front of the sits bones and your low back might shorten. So just do that. Find those bony landmarks from front to back, east to west. So pause for a moment. Let's put a little breath into this. And you can place one hand on your belly and one hand on your heart or your chest. Breathe in. Fill the whole body up. And as you do that, rock to the front of the sits bones. And as you breathe out, empty. Imagine drawing in. So we're creating a vacuum. Generally, the exhalation is passive but I want you to think of gently drawing in. And as you're drawing in through the front body, rock back. So inhalation, fill front body, rock forward. Exhalation, empty. And imagine drawing all the tissue of your front side, even your skin, towards the front of the spine. So what we're starting to feel first is check to see that your breath is going to accommodate this movement. If you're struggling to breathe right now, I have other videos that you can go to. I have some specifically on the pelvic floor, but if you're feeling this rocking motion to your breath and you're able to go forward, front body expands back, front body contracts, then take a specific feel, a look with your brain at the abdomen. Can you draw the abdomen in on the exhalation? Can you feel the abdomen expand on the inhalation? So that is your TVAs going to work for you. So we're just rocking back and forth. Inhale, fill your belly like a big balloon. Exhale, make a concerted effort, but soft to draw it in as you rock back. Then let's change our gazing point. Take it all the way down to the bottom of your pelvic floor. And there's particular muscles we go for uh, the main ones we talk about, the, the levator ante, which is actually three muscles, but we want to feel that same vacuum effect on the exhalation in the pelvic floor. So if you, what we always say is if you can, you have to feel it first in your TVAs. If you're not finding TVAs, then this video for today, just work on finding TVAs. Otherwise, if we're feeling the vacuuming or the cinching in on the exhalation in the TVAs, then we go down to the pelvic floor. So same thing, exhalation, TVAs, and pelvic floor, it's like they're giving each other a hug. Inhalation, they're releasing and expanding. Exhalation, hugging. 
And if it's helpful, you can think of the diaphragm. So as you're breathing in, the diaphragm is pressing down. Remember that it's flattening, it's pushing into the organs. There's that filling pushing into your pelvic floor and your abdominal wall. Breathing out, diaphragm relaxes, draws up. And as the diaphragm relaxes, the TVAs and the pelvic floor say, oh, it's our turn for support. So they're switching, switching roles, right? And just find that a few more times, rocking back and forth. And then we're going to take it down to the ground. So we're coming into what we call constructive rest posture, letting your back and spine relax. Feel free to hug your knees into your chest first and be playful, rock around. Acknowledge your back body fully supported from the ground and placing the feet on the floor so that they're about as wide as your hips, not letting your feet be too far from the body that your back is arching but not so close that the low back is pressing into the ground. So a, a sweet space right in between. And then if you have a strap or even a towel, something small, slide it right underneath that arch of your lumbar spine. Place it right there. And you may not feel it, but it's, it's the idea that we know it's there. So now let's do that same rocking we just did. Hands on the abdomen, breathe in. And we're rocking forward, so we're lifting up away from the strap. You're going to feel your abdomen, pelvic floor stretch. Breathing out, pelvic floor and abdomen contract. And you're going to push your low back and low ribs into that strap. Breathe in, lift away from the strap. Feel your abdomen and pelvic floor stretch. Breathe out. Feel them contract. One way that you can add if you're starting to feel pelvic floor, and if you're not sure, by the way, if you feel it stretch, or contract, you know it's moving. There's movement if you feel it on either side. But with the feet where they are, as you breathe in, if you wanna drop your thighs open, you might sense a little bit more of that stretching of the pelvic floor. So that's the north and south points, right? You might feel that. And as you breathe out, gently hug your thighs together and see if you can draw actively draw the pelvic floor up and in. Inhaling. You'll feel that stretching from the pubis to the navel center and the two hips and the abdomen. Exhale, contract that area and hug the thighs. Just a few more of these. In silence, just to feel. We're lifting away from the strap, pressing into it. All right, let's pause for a moment. And now we're gonna go big time. So actually you can keep the strap underneath there. So now we want to feel the weight of our legs and we're going to imagine that our legs themselves don't have any way to be mobile. The only way to lift a leg is from these strong muscles in your core. So continuing with the inhalation, let your back arch, but as you exhale and press down, lift just your left leg to 90 degrees. So we want to make sure that, that we stop with the knee over the front of the hip and the shin parallel to the floor. So what we don't want to do is come way back here. We're actually missing the, the spiciness. We want to stop right here. So inhale, arch the back. Foot comes back down. I'll move my hands out of the way. Exhale, right leg. Draws in just to 90 degrees. Looks really simple, but focus on this idea that it's your transversus abdominis, the beautiful corset of muscles, lifting up the weight of the leg. Inhale, arch, belly expands. Exhale, contract the abdomen and draw the leg to 90 degrees. So it's like you're walking in place. Arch the back, stretch. Maybe you feel the pelvic floor too. Exhale, draw it in. If you want to feel a little more pelvic floor when the foot comes down, you could drop the leg out to the side. Then you're getting one side of that east-west. Exhale, hug it to the midline as you draw the leg in just a little bit. Inhale, drop the leg out. So that's a little more brain candy. You got to think about that. Draw, draw it to the midline. So you can really center yourself on one side of the pelvic floor. And this is important because with what we typically get for pelvic floor is a Kegel exercises, and they're really only working front to back, not side to side, and oftentimes just the front. So find that rhythm. TVAs, pelvic floor. Do a few more of these. And going up and down nice and slow. 
So each one of these movements is gonna build on the next. Make sure you're feeling it here. So you know you're not feeling it. Here's an example. If when you're drawing the leg in, your rectus abdominis is sticking up into the sky, we're not finding that transverse. Or if you find your back is arching and we can't flatten the back and draw in, again, we're not using TVAs, pelvic floor secondary. But let's say we found that. Then I want you to lengthen your low back and you're gonna take your knees to 90 degrees. So we're gonna keep the legs in this position. What I often find is that people may have a hard time um, flattening the back. So if that's the case, what you can do is place your hands right underneath your butt cheeks. Say hello to your butt cheeks. Take a few breaths there. We're gonna do that same movement, but we're gonna start with the legs suspended in the air. So now breathing in, take the foot down, left foot maybe first, arch the back so you can push your buttocks into your hands. Breathe out, lift the leg just back to 90 degrees. Again, we're not coming back here and we're switching off. Right leg touches the ground, so toe dips and come back. It seems super simple, but these deep core muscles, again, they're, they're not like a bicep. We can't just say, let's turn it on, let's turn it off. We need to focus and use the diaphragm. Take your time. Maybe you're starting to feel a little bit of heat. Inhale, arch. Exhale in. If you don't need your hands there, or if you find you're drawing your legs too far back, then take your hands like this, like bumpers. Inhale, arch the back. Exhale, draw in. Think of lifting the weight of your leg from this corset of muscles in the front and the pelvic floor. Full breath in. And you'll recognize it's the breath out, which is usually passive. It's not right now, right? We're, we're activating these muscles on the exhale. Take a few more here. And then pause, just feel. So do you feel, and, and by the way, if you're not feeling the muscles as much right now either, contact me in two days, because then you'll definitely know if you're finding them. <laughs> We're going to continue that. Like I said, we're going to spice it up just a tiny bit more. So hand, hands can be on the abdomen just to feel. Use your hands as feelers. Coming back to the 90 degrees, lengthen your tailbone. Or the hands can be here if you find it supports your spine better. You can also put a blanket down here, by the way. As we inhale, instead of just dipping the toes down, extend the leg out so you're actually stretching the top of your thigh and it's a little more work for your transverse abdominis because the further your toes any part of your body goes from the center of your core the more the core has to work to bring them back in right so now as i exhale i'm drawing in from my core pressing low back and low ribs into the strap extend on inhale arch the back and you'll feel that belly fill up exhale draw in from the abdomen maybe the pelvic floor, come back to 90 degrees. So I'm gonna move my hands out of the way. Inhale, press through the leg, like you're pushing on a pedal. Exhale, low back, low ribs, press into the floor. Shorten the space from the pubis to the navel center. You can think about shortening it that way, pubis to navel center, or hip to hip, or all of those. So going all the way out coming back in. So here's another thing that I really watch for is, as you're doing this now, is tension building anywhere else? Your shoulders, your neck, your jaw. So what we find when these intuitive muscles aren't doing their job is we'll start to build tension in other places. So can you keep your head and neck and shoulders relaxed and really rely on pelvic floor and transversus abdominis to draw the leg back in? And the key here, as you're seeing, is we want to be in what we call that little bit of a, almost a posterior tilt, not too far, but flattening the low back as we bring the leg in. Do a few more. Let that heat build. Relax the upper body. So this is all below the lower waist, you below your rib cage. Shoulders are relaxed, pectoral muscles. and take it back down. Let's just do some windshield wipers. Add a little sweetness in there. A 
We'll do one more movement today, still following that same pattern. So we can continue on. And now sometimes the helpers for, for finding that, uh, once we've found the TVAs and maybe pelvic floor too, is to add the internal obliques. So those are also stabilizing muscles that help to hold your inner abdominal pressure. They, they support your organs. So you're gonna have, I'm gonna have you take just your left hand, place it behind your head. Let your right arm relax. Breathe in and press the left elbow and shoulder blade into the ground. So you're gonna feel more of an arch in your upper back. You'll feel your rib cage lift as the upper rib cage as well as the lumbar spine. And then as you exhale, you're going to draw that left leg in and just squeeze the arm for now towards the head. We're not gonna lift the head yet. Inhale, foot comes down, arch the back, upper back too. Exhale, curl the spine into the ground. So tailbone will lift, squeeze your arm in. And just in squeezing the arm in, you might start to feel how the muscles on the left side, particularly all the way up to the pectoral muscles now, are contracting. And that's the big part, is just getting your feelers back for when our muscles tightening or shortening, contracting, and when are they lengthening? And remember, they can be lengthening and, and stuck too. So getting them through the range of motion. Once you know this is working for you, I have to be careful not to come too far back, then to spice it up a little bit, you can inhale and arch, and exhale as you curl, you can lift the head. But the rule with lifting as a head is that we don't want to tuck the chin towards the chest and shorten the throat. You want to keep the crown of the head reaching back and lift from your shoulder blades, lift from your collarbones. Let the head use your hand as a pillow. Inhale down, arch, exhale, curl up. So right now you're really feeling all those muscles on the left side of the body. They're organizing themselves, lengthening front body on the inhale, shortening front body on the exhale. Let's change it up a little bit. Let's make this more of a cross body pattern. So cue your right leg, feel your right leg, inhale into the arch and exhale, lift your right leg up, curl. So notice I don't have to go very far if I don't cheat and bring my head forward. Inhale, arch, reach the crown of the head back and lift the shoulder blades and collarbones. Inhale, tailbone into the ground, shoulder blades, arm into the ground. Exhale, sh outer shoulder blades lift, or the left side does, as the tailbone lifts. And again, check that your rectus abdominis, that big six-pack ab muscle, is not sticking up into the sky when you come here. It should be this drawing in of the front body. So this one you can change up a little bit. So you can come straight up, nose between the collarbones, or you can make it more of a cross body pattern by coming across. You could also go to the inhale to extension if you really want to spice it up. Exhale, but remember you're lifting, bringing the leg in and now the arm from your core, from your torso muscles. Inhale, arch, extend the leg. Exhale, curl, bring it in. Do a few more in the cross body pattern, picturing your left shoulder area and your right hip area working together. So on the lower back, low back in, in the um, hip area, you're in the right activation and upper back shoulder area left. Sense that cross body movement. A few more, building the heat, letting your head be heavy in your hand. Last one, you can even take it up, hold it for a few breaths. So this is another way you'll know you're using transversus abdominis is if I'm holding it and I'm drawn in here and now here, you're gonna have to bring your breath all the way up to your, like right around your collarbones because this is in lockdown or what we call bracing. Nobody likes the word lockdown anymore, sorry. Remove that. And release it. Let yourself come down. Let's hug the knees into the chest before we do the second side. Feet back down, pause for a moment. Notice if there's any heat building too. 
and just checking in with your muscles. So let your brain reorganize itself around this feeling of the beautiful rhythm of the diaphragm and how it plays with the TVAs and the pelvic floor. They're always doing the opposite thing in order to support one another. Let's do the second side. So take your right hand behind you and pause just to be present. You know, I, I show Mr. Bones not because we need to know all the muscles. It's, it's about creating what I call, it's the anatomy of imagery. Visualize this beautiful relationship. Now, as you breathe in, arch the back again, press your right shoulder and elbow into the ground. So left shoulder's relaxed. I noticed mine was trying to push down and trying to tell it to be quiet. And as you exhale, bring the right leg in and just hug the right arm towards your head. So you're just lifting the elbow up. Start there, light comes in 90 degrees. So focusing on contracting the right side. And you can even place your left hand. Can you feel the muscles between the ribs or you go into your intercostals? So there's this chain reaction of transversus abdominis, which is that deeper core and then superficial or on top of it, we have those, we have the uh, oblique muscles. Start there. And if you're feeling that action of the shortening in the front body and the exhale, then think of reaching the crown of the head back. Let the head be heavy in the hand. As you exhale, lift the shoulder blade, especially the right, but both will come up. Lift the shoulder blade and the collarbones. Inhale, press tailbone down, press shoulder blade and arm down. Exhale, tailbone lift slightly. Keep the head back. So I always know if I'm cheating with my head because I'll start to be able to see my leg. If you're looking straight up where you should, you really don't see your leg as it comes in. Inhale, arching. Exhale, feel just that right side clench down. And then release the left, right side. So that's the thing too, right? If sometimes we hold tension, so we wanna make sure it's relaxing and stretching as you breathe in. Arch the back, stretch the front. Curl the back, contract the front. You can be drawing the pelvic floor in for more support. And let's switch it out. Let's make this a cross body movement. So just visualize or feel your left leg. Breathe in and arch the back. Breathe out, come up, left leg and right arm. So picture yourself contracting through the right shoulder area and the left hip area, inhaling into the arch. Exhaling, gaze up, curl. Or if this is in any way aggravating your neck, you can do it with your head on the ground and you're still going to get that cross body action. Don't have to lift the head. Just even lift a half an inch just to feel those muscles engage. And as you come up on the exhale, you can keep your nose to the center line of the body. But you can also play with crossing towards the center of the line, line of the body with both the leg and the arm. Something I find really important in working with the breath too is it keeps us at a steady rhythm. So I see people do <laughs> over and over, right? It's actually, to me, more work to move slower through it. Exhale, really slow. Pause at the top of the, or at the bottom of the exhale. Inhale, pause at the top of the inhale. Notice the expansion. Exhale, slowly through it, feel it. And then if you wanna go into the leg extension, inhale, extend, arch the back, shoulder blade presses down on the right side, left side's relaxed. As I remind myself, exhale, draw the leg in and elbow in. Cheated on the head there. Hard to talk and do this at the same time. So drawing in, breathing in, expanding out, Breathing out, drawing in. Picture that rhythm. Diaphragm presses down on the inhalation. When we're here, abdomen expands, pelvic floor expands, and diaphragm draws back up under the ribs, and we have that room to draw in through the abdomen and the pelvic floor. Take your last few. 
enjoy a little bit of heat building perhaps. And take it down, whatever leg position feels best for you. Shake out your legs, shift your hips side to side. Take your hands to your belly. And in its most relaxed way, continue to feel this rhythm, this natural rhythm that occurs. And see if on the exhalation, now you have the ability to make that breath out be passive. So it's just an answer to the inhale. We automatically send the breath back out. And you be soft with your breath out. But even in this lying down position, can you exhale and make that exhalation a little more forceful? And maybe you need to press your back into the ground. And can you think of the twins, the transverses of dominance and the pelvic floor diamond, stretching as the diaphragm presses down, and drawing up and in as the diaphragm draws in. So if you imagine they all had a string attached, they're pushing towards your feet as you breathe in and upward in the abdomen, and then drawing towards your head as you breathe out. And then going back, so that's when you really know that you've, you've reignited these muscles to anticipate is just in a lying down position. You can go back to that passive exhalation and let's do that. But knowing you have the ability to go to that active exhalation and get a little more structure in your abdominal area and your pelvic floor. But be passive and joy. Sensing any heat in your body. And there are no mistakes in there. It's, it's a pretty tight space with all of those organs. And so be grateful before we come up. Just maybe rub your abdomen. Be thankful for these muscles that are Supporting your organs both from the front and very importantly from the bottom, right? Keeping our pee pee and poo poo where they belong, when they belong there. Also important for sexual function. So lots of reasons to connect with your pelvic floor as well as your transverses abdominis. And I hope you were able to take your time coming up. And thanks for joining me and finding your twins, playing with your twins. Um, thank you to my lovely patrons who support me and for everybody else. I appreciate your comments and any donations. Let me know what you want to see and let me know how this video works for you. Peace, joy, love, and light.